Dizzy Gillespie. Where? Ah, oh. oh, Sleeping Beauty has returned to the land of the living. Like, hi, where's everybody been? Ever since I've been a teacher, low these many years, I've learned to expect a certain deficiency of communication between pupil and instructor. I've experienced this unhappy state of affairs in varying degrees, sometimes small, often considerable. But never, Mr. Krebs, never until you registered in this class has this lack of communication reached absolute perfection. And for this, I owe you thanks. Oh, I was like nothing. I know. But thanks anyway. <laughs> For the bleak present, shall we all turn to page 281 of this week? <laughs> Since I am too young to retire, and thanks to you, now too shaky to be drafted, <laughs> I shall see you all tomorrow at the same time. On your mark, get set, dis, miss. <laughs> Oh, uh, Mr. Osmond. Yes. I uh, want to congratulate you on your excellent term paper. Oh, yes, it was rather smashing, wasn't Especially it? Especially the subject matter. Uh -huh. The care and preservation of family fortunes accrued before the outrageous tax boost of 1889. Fascinating. Yes. Fascinating. That's the word. Fascinating. You know, taxation of the aristocracy is the bugaboo of my social circle. In a square circle. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Milfloss, I know we have entered the era of the common man, but this is ridiculous. Please, I have enough fighting when my wife starts in on me for not going into air conditioning. Uh, Mr. Milfloss, I must inform you that I shall not be attending class next week. I shall be in Bermuda. In the middle of the semester? Well, of course. It's the yacht racing season. Oh, forgive me. I have raced a yacht and... Oh, must be days. <laughs> right. You see, uh, in the interscholastic blue water trophy the sale... The interscholastic blue, blue water, water trophy sale, yes. Uh, our school colors will fly from the mast of my speedy 51-foot sloop. And I shall strive my utmost for good old Central High. Uh, ship ahoy, mateys. Boy, what a creep. The creepiest. I mean, uh, a boy like Chatsworth Osborne Jr. is bound to be... Different. Yeah. yeah. Remember, he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Mm -hmm. Ooh, no wonder he talks like funny. Please, Maynard. The teacher's union says that during recess, I am entitled to eight carefree, relaxed minutes during which I am to think happy thoughts. Yeah, well, we're sorry to bother you, Mr. Milkloss, but this is important. Maynard has a problem. Now, how can I help you, Maynard? Come on, though. We gotta, like, make tracks. No, Maynard, no, no. You have a problem. You can't run away from it. I'm not trying to run away from it. I just wish it had run away from me. Maynard. Now, this sounds serious. It is, Mr. Milfloss. It's a question of Maynard's whole future. Well, that's a question in itself. What's to become of it? You mean, whither is he drifting? Yeah. Yeah, like whither. I don't quite understand. This has been Maynard's problem for... How old are you, Maynard? Like 18. Whither is he drifting has been Maynard's problem for 18 years. Why the sudden panic? Well, yesterday when he got a minus two on Minus his... two? Yeah, yeah, on his history exam, we decided it was time for action. Yeah, I, like, answered two questions wrong. The teacher didn't even ask. Yeah. <laughs> Whither am I drifting? Well, Maynard. Mr. Milfloss, you're a nice man. Thank you. And smart, too. Thank you. For a teacher. <laughs> I mean, somebody has to save Maynard, and we picked you. Well, those are the breaks. <laughs> Look, Mr. Milfloss, Maynard isn't hopeless. He has a, a friendly personality. True. And an upright moral character. True. And a good head and his shoulders. <laughs> no kidding, Mr. Milfloss. Maynard would really amount to something if we could ever get him moving in the right direction. But he keeps going around in circles. Yeah, I'm like dizzy. Yeah. Maynard, your problem is not unique. Many young men these days find themselves in your shoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, in the same situation. They lack a goal in life. Maynard, what Mr. Milfloss means is, does anybody depend on you? I got like four goldfish. Do any people depend on you? Yeah. Doby. No, I kind of like depend on him. Yeah. Anybody else? Like nobody. You take it from me, Maynard. If somebody depended on you, counted on you, looked up to you, you'd soon find that your life would take on purpose and direction. I gotta get some more goldfish. <laughs> no, what you need is a girl. A girl? Sure, Maynard, it happens to everybody. Oh, no, I'm scared of chicks, dope. Oh, no. In the I movies, they it. eat all my popcorn. Oh, they run ahead of me through doors. And in the girls' gym, they giggle about me. Don't <laughs> worry, Maynard. Someday you'll find a girl who really needs you, and then you'll forget all about your little props. Yeah. Where am I gonna find a chick that, like, needs me? I mean, don't it have to be somebody I'm better than? Well, uh... All right, so Maynard needs somebody who needs him. But who? Or what? And why? Nope, it, it's a sad but true question. 
Who needs him? Like, who needs me? <laughs> Maynard, stop running yourself down. Name like one person who needs me. Well? Just a minute, I'm thinking. See? I'm like lost. Doomed. You've always got me. Yeah, I'm like lost. Doomed. Well, thanks a lot. No, 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 good buddy. I just meant that you don't need me. If I was to flake off someplace, you'd keep swinging and never even know it was gone. I'm like lost. Do! Maynard, cut that out. Of course I'd miss you if you went away. I'd depend on you to talk to and... Yeah. No, clue me on how much you'd miss me if I wasn't here. No. Daddy? My name's Dobie Gillis. You're a vision of loveliness. Pardon, mais je ne comprends rien. Huh? Est-ce qu'il n'y a personne qui parle français? Il me faut aller au bureau du principal. Oh, German girl, huh? <laughs> Aidez-moi, s'il vous plaît. Je suis étrangère ici. Il me faut aller au bureau du principal immédiatement. Oh, I, I got it. You're French. Uh, yeah, uh, Mademoiselle. Ah, yeah. tu parles français? Uh, no. Mais c'est magnifique, uh, c'est uh, super. No. Uh, me, uh, Americano. Uh, uh, what are you looking for? Looking, you know? Uh, uh, where are you going? Go. Go, uh, uh, can I, can I uh, help you, uh, uh, just say, say, what did I say? I'm only trying to talk to you. You don't speak very good English, do you? Don't, don't quit your yammering at the poor chip. Here, here. Oh, merci, merci, mon cher uh, protecteur. It's okay, sure. You're giving her the willies. C'est lui qui a commencé, il me dit que je peux aller. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You speak French. French, I don't even speak English. Then how do you know what she's saying? I don't know, Pop. It's kind of like what she says. It's got a beat. Oh, man. It's all right, immigrant girl. Dobie didn't mean to scare you. Oh, merci, merci. Oh, Maynard G. Krebs. Uh, I'll dig you later, good buddy. You stick with me. Oh, Maynard G. Krebs. Yeah. How do you figure it? I mean, here was this lovely creature who was so Parisian that she made Marie Chevalier look like he came from Cleveland. And she was talking up a storm to Maynard, who has trouble reading a label on a bottle of French dressing. I mean, it was spooky, but they sure seemed to understand each other. And for a while, it was the best thing that ever happened to Maynard. Would you like a seat? Huh? Écoute, vous voulez pas m'aider? Je suis si malheureuse parce que je n'arrive pas à comprendre l'américain. Never fear, Maynard's here. Vous voyez, mon père m'a demandé de venir ici, mais je ne comprends personne. Oh, Maynard G. Krebs, tu es magnifique, si gentil. Yeah, likewise. Maynard, Maynard, stop holding out. Who is she? Her handle is François Desjardins, and her past in some place called Paris, in France, I think. She's been going to school for a couple of months while her father finished up some kind of business. Maynard, that's amazing. You're not bad for a cat to flunk French four times. You flunked French four times? Yeah, but I cheated. Yeah, yeah. Cool it, Francois Chick. I got you covered. Oh, good morning. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we all turn to page 281? Oh, a newcomer. Mr. Milford, sir. Please, Mr. Krebs, I'll talk to the young lady. Uh, have you filled out your registration papers, Mr. Mr. Milford? Like down, think... boy, down. Pourquoi parlez-vous comme ça, mon cher Ménard G. Krebs? Uh, vous êtes un mauvais homme, pas sympathique. Vraiment, alors, il est le plus gentil de vos élèves ici. Mr. Krebs, et vous le like traitez yes, comme un étranger. Maybe I like, et qu'est-ce que c'est que ces manières? Like yes, Cet homme, il est pourtant bien gentil avec moi. Vous êtes un drôle Reach. de professeur. Voilà. That crepe suit, that's too hot for me to handle. Cher. Cher? Yeah. Sit. Pencil. Pencil? Yeah. Like paper. Like paper? Yeah. Mr. Melfloss, we're like ready. Maybe a long time before I am. <laughs> He's like a teacher. Teacher? Mr. Milfloss? Yes, Mr. Gillis? This is Maynard G. Krebs. He's like a friend of mine. <laughs> I'm so happy for you both. <laughs> Maynard was on clouds 9 through 109 inclusive. He'd finally found somebody who needed him, and it was turning him into a man. It was beautiful. <laughs> Oh, no, 
taught you in English. Yeah, like cool. <laughs> what Mr. Melfloss said really came true. Now that Maynard had somebody who needed him and looked up to him, he knew whether he was drifting. Right away, his grades started to get better. They were rapidly rising to a D average. <laughs> and then, disaster. I okay. <laughs> the sailor home from the sea. Hello, Mr. Melfloss. Welcome home, Mr. Osborne. How did you make out at the yacht race? Uh, two firsts in a cycle. Oh, congratulations. Here, our school colors. They flew from the mast of my speedy 51 50 foot sloop. <laughs> I would have had a clean sweep except for some beastly trouble with a lightning foretop jibsel. Those lightning foretop jibsels will get you every time. Well, well, well. What have we here? Oh, je m'assieds ici parce qu'on m'a dit que c'est une chaise inoccupée. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oyster, Bill's from a vague off chance where it's still like dig your lingo. Oh, not your lingo, perhaps, mon enfant. But Mumsy and I have not been wintering in the Riviera just for the pâté de foie gras, you know. <laughs> Mademoiselle. C'est un grand plaisir de vous bienvenir à notre pays oh, et à sick. notre école. Your hand. As you might call Chatsworth Osborne Feats. Chatsworth Osborne Feats it means Chatsworth Osborne the son, or in your vernacular, Junior. Oh, well, sure, everybody knows that. May we? We may! <laughs> All right, my young multilinguals. Class dismissed. <laughs> Comme un vrai Parisien, monsieur Osbonne Fils. Je Maynard, stop dramatizing. She's only a girl. Only a girl? The only girl ever like look on like a girl. I'm lost. Doom. This really hit you, didn't it? Right in the heart. Here, Maynard. <laughs> That's okay. Maynard, you're not gonna lose, Francois. That uh, Chatsworth Osborne feast. She went for you once. Yeah, I went to old feast barreled in. But see, she can like talk. You talk to her. No, we like Doug. We didn't like talk. Well, that proves your two hearts beating as one. Maynard, love can overcome any obstacle. Not all them parley vous and silver plates. Yeah, leap over the language barrier. Appeal to her as a man. Me? Dob, you gotta be Josh. No, Maynard, we're gonna give you a complete overhaul. You're as good as Chatsworth any day. First, some new clothes. What's wrong with these? <laughs> this might be tougher than I thought. <laughs> to sell my platters and hi-fi gear. You like have to if you're gonna have any money. But it's like losing my right arm with my beard. Maynard, no money, no clothes. No clothes, no Francois. No argument. No. Hi, hey. like, hey. hi Maynard. Like, hi, Riff. You know my good buddy, Dobie. Hi, Riff. Yeah, I saw him walk by a Dizzy Gillespie album without bowing. <laughs> hey, you got some loot? He come in here for some free spin. I came in to sell my platters and hi-fi. Oh, Pops, you been, like, drafted? No, it's like a chick. That's worse. I take it she got tipped or tapped out, true? She even broken in yet. What would you do if she was a Lawrence Welk record? Drop, Drop her. her. Now yeah. stay out of this, Riff. She's Maynard's girl. Would you tell us how long to wait in the bus? There are more important things in life than jabs. Well, man, like, ain't he been reported to some committee? Don't be rough, Riff. He ain't had our advantages. Maynard, hurry up and sell this stuff. This place gives me the creeps. Like Vice and like Versa. How much are you gonna throw me for the whole heap? I got some sounds in there that are so progressive, nobody understands them. And man, that preamp, it really shakes. 
Man, I'm gonna do you like a favor. Yeah, like how much? Like nothing. Like nothing? Like zero. Man, you're like putting me on. No, I'm like doing it for your own good. You're gonna toss all this down the drain for like a five foot two eyes of blue? I'm like ape over. Look, you're a swinging protest cat. And I protest if you quit protesting. But I like gotta quit. Man, you're like flipping. Look, stay out of this, Riff. You're, you're running a record shop, not a Lonely Hearts Club. Why don't you go find out if Dr. Schweitzer will make a house call? Now, that's silly. Oh, uh, you're in trouble, brother. He's an advanced case. Look, May Maynard, either sell the stuff or let's get out of here. Yeah, buy it, Daddy-o. I'd hate to sell it to a stranger. You know one of them. I like losing you, man. I'll be like back. Uh, they never come back. Like, farewell, Maynard. What do you got? I got five felonious monk albums. Thelonious Monk? That's like the kid selling Lassie. Two Miles Davis, two Cal Jaded, two Ahmed Jamal. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. What's this doing in there? Sal Minio recites Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> one of my mothers. Your mother? Took a lot of weeping and wailing, but Maynard finally sold his records and got enough money to buy a new sport jacket and a shirt. But that was only the preliminary. The main event was still to come, and Maynard was going to get hit right where it hurts. Shave off my beard! You've got to do it, Maynard. Show Francois that you've really become a gentleman. Shave off my beard? It's a symbol of the kind of life you're leaving behind. Shave off my beard! All right, all right. Forget about it. Run around for the rest of your life looking like a like a slob. I was gonna say eccentric. However, uh, you're right, Dobie. I'm a slob. I gotta do it. Oh, you won't be sorry, Maynard. It'll change your whole way of living. They'll yeah. call you that clear-eyed, clean-cut Maynard G. Krebs. Yeah. You won't be an outsider. You'll belong. Shave off my beard. <laughs> Shave off his beard. <laughs> oh, oh, sure. Yeah. Bring him over in a half hour. Okay. Maynard Krebs. They want me to shave off his beard. Maynard Krebs? I gotta tell my kid. This is like seeing Haley's Comet. Now relax, Maynard. Everything will be fine. Dobe, I'm scared. Now, now, Mr. Sneed is a very experienced barber. Aren't you, Mr. Sneed? Why, in 22 years, I haven't lost a patient yet. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Maynard? Pretty funny, huh? <laughs> Good buddy, I won't like out. Maynard, <laughs> now, there's nothing to worry about. I'll be right here next to you. Promise? I promise. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Maynard. He just fainted. <laughs> now for the unveiling. Mademoiselle. Maynard, c'est toi. Maynard G. Krebs. 
for you, my cher Francois. <laughs> kind of tough to do with sneakers. <laughs> Captain Finn, you Francois, you dropped your flowers. Ah, Francois, oh. you I'll pick them up for you, Francois. Ah, l'hôtel moderne, sur la place de la République. Oh, mon hôtel favori est sur la place de la Concorde. Oh, mon hôtel favori, moi, il est sur la place de la Concorde. Mais je connais votre hôtel aussi. You don't want my flowers. Je connais cet hôtel-là. I got no girl. I got no beard. Maynard. Maynard. Francois. Maynard. Maynard. Maynard, uh, can you get along without us, Mr. Milfoss? I'd certainly like to try. <laughs> I'm like lost. Doom! Doom! Lost! Maynard, we're not going through that again. He, like, hates me. She looked right through me like I was indivisible. Maynard, that's invisible. <laughs> yeah, invisible. I know you're suffering, but you've just got to be brave. How can I? I'm like naked. <laughs> Maynard, I'll make it up to you. Yeah, let's go over to the malt shop. I'll treat. Uh, how about the movies? They're showing a great double feature. The monster that devoured Cleveland and the son of the monster that devoured Cleveland. <laughs> Maynard remembered. It's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Ask me, I know. Uh-oh. Chapsworth is screaming me to come down here me. just so you can rub it in. Unfortunately, Chap, that's not why we're here at all. Parlez maintenant. Ah, uh, Tom, ma chère. You can't know how this pains me, but Francoise wants me to give you a message. Like Look, a message? I don't want to do it, but we members of the aristocracy have a certain obligation to our social inferiors. Noblesse oblige, they call Noblesse. it. Noblesse. Go on already. Well, she wants me to tell you that Tu insistes. J'insiste. J'insiste. Go ahead. Dites-lui que je l'aimais parce qu'il était bon et aussi que je vous parlais parce que j'avais tellement envie de parler le français. Françoise wants me to tell you that the only reason she ever paid any attention to me was because she was dying to speak French with someone, anyone. Oh, how degrading. Aussi que je l'aimais parce qu'il était tellement bon. Also because you were good. Like truth. Et gentil. And kind. Like truth. Avec un cœur d'or. Like truth. Wait, Krebs, baby. I didn't even translate it yet. I <laughs> you. I dig what she says. Mais il a changé. Il porte de nouveaux habillements et il a comme un garçon différent. She hey, liked the way I used to be le... with my beard and my sweatshirt. Yeah. Le garçon que je vois maintenant, il n'est pas le vrai Maynard G. Krebs. She says the way I am now is not the real Maynard G. Krebs. La chula, la you haven't lost her, Maynard. She just wants you the way you used to be. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. sweatshirt, oui, oui. Yeah, my beard, oui. yeah. and Francois, oui. man, yeah. I'm living. Vive le Maynard, vive le Dobie. Vive la France. Vive la, vive, vive la Eiffel Tower. <laughs> I got a letter from Francois, from Paris. Oh, that's great, Maynard. What's she got to say? Oh, I tried to read it, but you know, she's French. Oh, well, here, maybe I can make it out. You, uh, couldn't read this. Not a word. It's written in English. Hey, like, how about that? What's it say? <laughs> Find a girl who really needs you, and then you'll forget all about your little problems. Yeah. Where am I going to find a chick that, like, needs me? I mean, don't it have to be somebody I'm better than? Well, uh... All right, so Maynard needs somebody who needs him. But who? Or what? And why? Nope, it, it's a sad but true question. Who needs him? Like, who needs me? <laughs> Maynard, stop running yourself down. Name, like, one person who needs me. Well, just a minute, I'm thinking. See, I'm like lost, doomed. You've always got me. Yeah, I'm like lost, doomed. Well, thanks a lot. No, 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 good buddy. I just meant that you don't need me. If I was to flake off someplace, you'd keep swinging and never even know it was gone. I'm like lost, doomed. Maynard, cut that out. Of course I'd miss you if you went away. I depend on you to talk to and... Yeah. Oh, do me on how much you'd miss me if I wasn't here. Oh. 
Daddy? My name's Dobie Gillis. You're a vision of loveliness. Pardon, mais je ne comprends rien. Huh? Est-ce qu'il n'y a personne qui parle français? Il me faut aller au bureau du principal. Oh, German girl, huh? <laughs> Aidez-moi, s'il vous plaît. Je suis étrangère ici. Il me faut aller au bureau du principal immédiatement. Oh, I, I got it. You're French. Yeah, uh, mademoiselle. Ah, yeah. tu parles français? Uh, no. Mais c'est magnifique, uh, c'est super. No, uh, me, uh, Americano. Uh, uh, what are you looking for? Looking, you know? Uh, uh, where are you going? Go, go. Uh, uh, can I, can I uh, help you? Uh, uh, just say, say, what did I say? I'm only trying to talk to you. You don't speak very good English, do you? Don't, don't. Quit your yammering at the poor chick here. here. Oh, merci, merci, mon cher uh, protecteur. It's okay. Sure. You're giving her the willies. Celui qui a commencé, il me dit que je peux aller. Anytime. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You speak French. French, I don't even speak English. Then how do you know what she's saying? I don't know, Pops. It's kind of like what she says. It's got a beat. Oh, man. It's all right, immigrant girl. Dobie didn't mean to scare... Yeah. Like paper. Like paper? Yeah. Mr. Melfort, we're like ready. Maybe a long time before I am. <laughs> He's like a teacher. Teacher? Yeah. Mr. Melfort? Yes, Mr. Gillis. This is Maynard G. Krebs. He's like a friend of mine. <laughs> I'm so happy for you both. <laughs> Maynard was on clouds 9 through 109 inclusive. He'd finally found somebody who needed him, and it was turning him into a man. It was beautiful. taught you in English. What Mr. Melfloss said really came true. Now that Maynard had somebody who needed him and looked up to him, he knew whither he was drifting. Right away, his grades started to get better. They were rapidly rising to a D average. <laughs> and then, disaster. I okay. <laughs> the sailor home from the sea. Hello, Mr. Melfloss. Welcome home, Mr. Osborne. How did you make out at the yacht race? Uh, two firsts in a cycle. Oh, congratulations. Here, our school colors. They flew from the mast of my speedy 51 foot sloop. <laughs> I would have had a clean sweep except for some beastly trouble with a lightning foretop jibs on. Dizzy Gillespie. <laughs> Where? Oh. Ah, Sleeping Beauty has returned to the land of the living. Like, hi, where's everybody been? Ever since I've been a teacher low these many years, I've learned to expect a certain deficiency of communication between pupil and instructor. I've experienced this unhappy state of affairs in varying degrees, sometimes small, often considerable. But never, Mr. Krebs, never until you registered in this class has this lack of communication reached absolute perfection. And for this, I owe you thanks. Oh, I was like nothing. I know. But thanks anyway. <laughs> For the bleak present, shall we all turn to page 281 of the... <laughs> Since I am too young to retire, and thanks to you now too shaky to be drafted, I shall see you all tomorrow at this same time. On your mark, get set, dis, miss. <laughs> Oh, uh, Mr. Osmond. Yes. I uh, want to congratulate you on your excellent term paper. Oh, yes, it was rather smashing, wasn't Especially it? Especially the subject matter. Uh -huh. The care and preservation of family fortunes accrued before the outrageous tax boost of 1889. Fascinating. <laughs> That's the word. Fascinating. You know, taxation of the aristocracy is the 
bugaboo of my social circle. <laughs> a square circle. Yeah. Mr. Milfloss, I know we have entered the era of the common man, but this is ridiculous. Please, I have enough fighting when my wife starts in on me for not going into air conditioning. Uh, Mr. Milfloss, I must inform you that I shall not be attending class next week. I shall be in Bermuda. In the middle of the semester? Well, of course. It's the yacht racing season. Oh, forgive me. I have raced a yacht and... Oh, must be days. <laughs> days. You see, uh, in the interscholastic blue water trophy the sale... interscholastic blue, blue water, water trophy sale, yes. Uh, our school colors will fly from the mast of my speedy 51-foot sloop. And I shall strive my utmost for good old central high. Uh, ship ahoy, mateys. Boy, what a creep. The creepiest. I mean, uh, a boy like Chatsworth Osborne Jr. is bound to be... Are you? <laughs> oh, merci, merci. Oh, Maynard G. Krebs. Uh, oh, I'll dig you later, good buddy. You stick with me. Yeah, come on, come on. Oh, Maynard G. Krebs. Yeah, yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. How do you figure it? I mean, here was this lovely creature who was so Parisian that she made Maurice Chevalier look like he came from Cleveland. And she was talking up a storm to Maynard who has trouble reading a label on a bottle of French dressing. I mean, it was spooky, but they sure seemed to understand each other. And for a while, it was the best thing that ever happened to Maynard. Would you like a seat? Huh? Écoute, vous voulez pas m'aider? Je suis si malheureuse parce well, que je n'arrive pas again. à comprendre l'américain. Never fear, Maynard's here. Vous voyez, mon père m'a demandé de venir ici, mais je ne comprends personne. Oh, Maynard G. Krebs, tu es magnifique, si gentil. Yeah, likewise. Maynard, Maynard, stop holding out. Who is she? Her handle is Francoise Desjardins, and her past in some place called Paris. In France, I think. She's been going to school for a couple of months while her father finished up some kind of business. Maynard, that's amazing. You're not bad for a cat that flunked French four times. You flunked French four times? Yeah, but I cheated. Yeah, yeah. Cool it, Francois Chick. I got you covered. Well, good morning, yeah. Yeah. Shall we all turn to page 281? Oh, a newcomer. Mr. Milfoy, sir. Please, Mr. Krebs, I'll talk to the young lady. Uh, have you filled out your registration papers, Mr. Mr. Milfloss likes... Down, me. boy, down. Pourquoi parlez-vous comme ça, mon cher Ménard G. Krebs? Uh, vous êtes un mauvais homme, pas sympathique. Vraiment, alors, il est le plus gentil de vos élèves ici. Mr. Krebs, et vous like le traitez yes, comme un étranger. Like Qu'est-ce que c'est que ces manières? Like yes, Cet homme, il est pourtant bien gentil avec moi. Vous êtes un drôle oui. de professeur. That crepe suit, that's too hot for me to handle. <laughs> sure. Chef? Yeah. Sit. Sit? Yeah. yeah. Remember, he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Mm. Ooh, no wonder he talks like funny. Please, Maynard. The teacher's union says that during recess, I am entitled to eight carefree, relaxed minutes during which I am to think happy thoughts. Yeah, well, we're sorry to bother you, Mr. Milkloss, but this is important. Maynard has a problem. Now, how can I help you, Maynard? Come on, though. We gotta, like, make tracks. No, Maynard, no, no. You have a problem. You can't run away from it. I'm not trying to run away from it. I just wish it had run away from me. Maynard. Now, this sounds serious. It is, Mr. Milfloss. It's a question of Maynard's whole future. Well, that's a question in itself. What's to become of it? You mean, whither is he drifting? Yeah. Yeah, like whither. I don't quite understand. This has been Maynard's problem for... How old are you, Maynard? Like 18. Whither is he drifting has been Maynard's problem for 18 years. Why the sudden panic? Well, yesterday when he got a minus two on minus his... Minus two? Yeah, yeah, on his history exam, we decided it was time for action. Yeah, I like answered two questions wrong the teacher didn't even ask. Yeah. <laughs> Whither am I drifting? Well, Maynard. Mr. Milfloss, you're a nice man. Thank you. And smart, too. Thank you. For a teacher. <laughs> I mean, somebody has to save Maynard, and we picked you. Well, those are the breaks. <laughs> Look, Mr. Milfloss, Maynard isn't hopeless. He has a, a friendly personality. True. And an upright moral character. True. And a good head and his shoulders. <laughs> no kidding, Mr. Milfloss. Maynard would really amount to something if we could ever get him moving in the right direction. But he keeps going around in circles. Yeah, I'm like dizzy. Yeah. Maynard, your problem is not unique. Many young men these days find themselves in your shoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, in the same situation. They lack a goal in life. Maynard, what Mr. Milfloss means is, does anybody depend on you? I got like four goldfish. Do any people depend on you? Yeah. Dobie. 
No, I kind of like to depend on him. Anybody else? Like nobody. You take it from me, Maynard. If somebody depended on you, counted on you, looked up to you, you'd soon find that your life would take on purpose and direction. I gotta get some more goldfish. <laughs> no, what you need is a girl. A girl? Sure, Maynard, it happens to everybody. Oh, no, I'm scared of chicks, dope. Oh, no. In that's the movies, silly. they eat all my popcorn. They run ahead of me through doors. And in the girls' gym, they giggle about me. Don't worry, Maynard. Someday you'll find.